Uh, welcome back to another episode of the Gapser channel. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, doing a little live demonstration and actually putting a crossover uh, together and uh, uh, in a way with the least interference possible. Uh, and we're going to let you see what and hear mostly what I hear. Uh, what I have here is a fairly simple. I have a, just a speaker. It's a small little mid-range speaker tied to a wire, and and then it ends right here. Uh, I have an oscilloscope hooked to it, so we can actually see and hear. And with those two clips, I'm going to put it on various components and see can we actually hear any interference from one component to another and then based on that we're going to position them in a way to be the least uh, uh, harmful to each other so yeah i'm going to do uh, the speaker i'm going to put it really close to the microphone on the camera so you won't be seeing this after this but you're going to hear the sound and i'm going to have the headphones connected for me so i can hear what you guys are hearing and together we're going to try to put this together uh, in a way so there'll be less uh, interference as much as possible. All right, so uh, here we are, I'm back. So we put the uh, microphone, uh, sorry, the speaker uh, close to the microphone on the camera so you guys can hear it. What you're hearing now, so let me just uh, here explain again. So. Uh, I have the uh, the uh, speaker uh, just simply hooked up to one of the uh, inductors, and uh, what we have is we have here a signal generator. So we're putting a, a one kilohertz signal uh, into this big inductor here, and uh, these are actually inductors I'm going to be using in my crossover for my uh, Gapster GS11 speaker, which we'll be uh, doing another video on. Uh, so basically we have a signal generator into the inductor. We're going to move the actual signal generator on different components as we go, so we can try different size inductors and see how they all interact. And uh, so we have... Uh, so and. Uh, the speaker, or like I said, is just simply connected to this inductor. And as you can see, as we put these close together, we did this demo in the video before. Actually, I'll link those in the description below. Uh, you could hear the sound gets pretty loud as we get close. And remember, if we talked about that, we gotta have them in a basically a different plane angle. Uh, 90 degrees is the ideal, as you see, as you put here at the is completely gone unless you get close then you'll hear a tiny bit so the moral of the story just an inch or two away and then on a perfect angle and you're good to be. that's not a perfect angle that is a perfect angle so that's pretty critical on, uh, on how things go here um, so the idea here is how we're going to put all four. This is a typical, uh, uh, basically, crossover, uh, second order. So we have, uh, usually you have about four inductors in a typical uh, three-way system. Uh, we need to get them to live in harmony. So we'll start with, uh, let's say, those two. We're going to put this one. I'm going to put them as far as possible. Remember, this is like a generously wide area usually you don't have that luxury but this is uh they are big cross uh big inductors so we're going to give them a bit of room so first one we're not going to put it like this so as you can see that's the worst uh situation because they're both flat so we're going to put this one on an angle and uh, let's practice close see I'm going to move it here. That's between those two. This seems to be the, the best place. Now, so we got those two uh, figured out. So I'm going to take the signal generator from the woofer and we're going to put it here on the mid range. Uh, this is 
this is another inductor. They're different. They're actually foil inductor, and that's why they look. They're supposed to be much better for sound. So now we put those two. So this one is a signature. We're trying to. So this has to live in harmony with this as well, not just this one. So what do we do now? We'll turn it a little bit. So we're going to turn it halfway between this guy and that guy. And because they are on quite a bit of distance from each other, you'll be the least amount of interference. You can never get it completely away unless you have them way far away. And especially, you can have two completely silent right there, for example. But, uh, but you can't have all four, so you're going to have to do some compromises. And the more distance you have, the better. Uh, so we're going to put this halfway between the two. So that's the least amount of, of interference. And then we have one more. We have this guy. And, uh, um, this guy and that guy. And that seems to work yeah, because there's a good distance and they're not on the, in a good, uh, the angle is not so bad. So that seems to be a good compromise. The question is now we're going to do, there's too many possibilities here. Now we'll go back to this one and put the signal generator on this guy and see if this guy is picking anything because this is like it's that's the worst position here and whoa that's a lot even at look at the distance here we're talking that's picking up uh, we have seven inches and, uh, sorry about that so we have seven inches and um, and it's still picking a uh, fair the amount of uh, interference noise. Uh, you could actually see them on the signal generator, so you could see the the uh, it is uh, it's, it's, yeah, the frequency. A little bit of uh, noise happening, so it's getting bouncing between one kilohertz and one point four. But that's noise. But you can clearly hear it on the speaker. Uh, so. Because we already have, we can't put this one, I mean sure that will solve the problem, but that's not going to solve the problem between those because now they're really in the same plane. And so we need to find a solution for this that if you don't need any sophisticated instruments to do this for yourself, you really don't need the oscilloscope. You just need a small speaker. I'm sure we all could have a small speaker. And uh, a signal generator, you can either pick up a cheap one, you can get this one off eBay, I got it for like about uh, 100 bucks. Or there's a lot of apps you can have for your phone or your tablet that will actually generate a signal. There's one thing I wanted to make you guys aware of, and uh, no one talks much about it, is how about capacitors? Would they actually, in proximity, generate noise? What do you think? Not a lot, but there's a little bit. And uh, depend on the angle. So if you mount this really close like this, it may not be the greatest thing. Especially if you're spending uh, $400 on one capacitor. It may not be the best thing for you. So I would suggest you move it. A little bit, even one inch will make a huge difference uh, from the other one. You can also practice with the same technique and find the best position because sometimes you can get closer depending on the angle again of the capacitor. The reason capacitors will pick up uh, the, the, uh, the sound, the capacitor is actually a foil and sometimes some expensive capacitor could be aluminum or copper even. And they're actually uh, like uh, wrapped into circles. It's somewhat like an inductor, even though it doesn't have any inductance much. Uh, but it will pick up the, as you can see, uh, I mean, someone could probably explain this more, but it's definitely the proof is we hear it in our own ears. There is some sort of interference. So 
a little bit of different distance will 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 help. Uh, and the last thing to do is uh, resistors. Uh, it's a big resistor like that. Same thing. It does pick up a little. Again, it's the wire that's rolled. Even though they claim they don't have any inductance, but somewhat they can pick up stuff. I'll try it different, and that's a very reputable brand of resistor. So you definitely cannot complain about the quality here of the resistor. This is another brand. Same thing. They all will pick up some. So again, common sense. Move them away. Inch is this pen. Uh, or find the right angle that you don't hear the noise in the, your little speaker. So, uh, so here you go. So we kind of figured out where to put all the inductors that we're going to put the capacitors about an inch away or in different angles. So that's um, that's going to give us a good idea, hopefully, for everyone to to understand how this works. All right, after uh, spending a good half an hour on this thing, we finally got uh, a way to get them all to work well together. Uh, the secret was try to get those two that are somewhat in the same plane to uh, not interfere. If you notice, that's in here a little bit here. And that is the magic number. And I've tried all different combinations, so to show you quickly. So let's say those two here. Oh, yeah. Some are moved here. Should be right, right here. It's very delicate, just so, like just, just a small change like this makes a huge difference. So right there. So. Those two are working well, those two are working well, those two are working well, and uh, uh, so this is the sky and this one, nothing. This guy and this guy, nothing. This guy and these guys. Also nothing. So that's good. So you change something like that, boom. Hell breaks loose. <laughs> okay, anyway, so this was right here. So so yeah, so here it is. Uh, the final uh, finally got them all to uh, to live well together and uh, so it takes some time and error and what you think should work may not always work and sometimes just a small variation of angle uh, would make a difference like these two uh, common sense usually would say if they're really at a perfect right angle together they should not make noise which is this but they do and it's more like this angle that seems to work the best and uh, happens to work good for here. These two are working well together, so don't touch it. <laughs> anyway, um, just one note here. I don't want you to get all worked up with, yes, we are hearing noises, but it may not be that harmful. Like, uh, for example, if the woofer is interfering with, an, uh, with a capacitor of the same kind, may not may not cause any harm. Uh, of course, you don't want the woofer injecting sound into, for example, the tweeter. You don't want the uh, tweet to be woofing and uh, vice versa, even though it's not a very loud noise, but a small amount may, may be critical to, uh, to a listening uh, session. Uh, and it all depends on what type of speakers are you building, now, on how what kind of level are you building. If it's just for a small, simple speaker, you may not care about it. You can put them really close reasonably and do, but if it's a you know, very high-end speaker and you're looking at the finest detail you can get, you might want to space them out and, and do this and try to lay them in a way where there is a, the least amount of interference. 
Anyway, I hope you found this uh, video helpful. I try to keep it as simple as possible and let you hear with your own uh, ears what's going on. And if you like the video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe. That would be very helpful for future uh, videos. Thank you very much and have a good day.